Hey guys, Chris here with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com here with another vlog for you. Now just a reminder, I know we've had a lot more people coming in to watch the vlogs than normal, uh, mainly because since we started doing the uh, question of the week, so we always put the question of the week, what the question of the week is going to be is usually the title of the vlog. So if you are here just to hear the question of the week, I will actually leave that as a comment, which I will pin to the top, the timestamp in which you can just skip ahead to see that. Now in our vlogs, we always start off with showing some inventory and just kind of some stuff going on inside the store, mainly for our local customers, but also if you're interested in kind of knowing the day-to-day -day sort of grind or the types of things we do or get in, feel free to watch that. But again, if you want the question of the week, just skip over it and go to that. And the question of the week is going to be rude gun store attendants or gun store owners. It seems to be a rampant thing that a lot of people complain about that I've seen definitely on my channel, people kind of ranting about their gun store owners or local gun dealers and it just seems to be, and it was my experience too before opening a gun store, that so many people in this industry who are behind the counter just seem to be so rude or lacking in people skills. Now, not all of them, but it seems to definitely be an issue that sort of permeates the gun industry. So that is something we're gonna talk about, some of my thoughts as to why that might be. But anyway, let's stick around, this is all coming up now. So I usually kind of talk about sort of the inventory we're getting in. I haven't had a much uh, kind of stuff in lately that's out of the ordinary or any stuff I have, I've already sold off before I had a chance to film a vlog. I know it's been about two weeks since I've had one of these up. So I did get some uh, CZ, some Checkpoint USA, or um, the uh, CZ, oh, they got Check Small Arms, I'm sorry, imported through CZ or Checkpoint USA, I'm sorry. Uh, it's obviously kind of uh, it's a lot of similarities in the names there. But anyway, these are really, really cool. If you guys have never looked at these, these are actually check made. Uh, and they are they actually are, you know, chambered in 762 by 39. Now, a lot of people think that these are AK-47s. They are not. They are their own design on a milled receiver, the VZ Model 58. So in every way, just like its military counterpart, except not fully automatic but just a really cool sort of iconic piece, actually made in Czechoslovakia. Now, Century Arms did make the VZ-2008, or CZ, I think it's called the VZ-2008. Those are basically parts guns built on US-made receivers and barrels, but this is about as authentic as you're gonna get. So, now those Century guns are actually going quite high up in value. They're already up at like seven, 800 bucks, and these were selling at like, I think 1100, so. For an original gun, I really recommend it. Now here's another one I think you guys would probably find pretty interesting. And this is one of the auto ordnance sort of remakes of the uh, model 1927A1. So very much kind of the Al Capone gangster era type thing. Uh, the barrel on here is longer. Now Andy, who you guys know, told me that the original one did have, was offered in a variation of this length. I'm not too sure, I haven't found that. If any of you guys know a little bit more about that, leave that down in the comment section for me. But I believe the traditional one was cut to about right here with the cuts compensator on it. But that is the cuts compensator. You can see the vents right here on the top. Now this is a really, really heavy submachine gun clone or copy, of course, in semi-automatic. The original one, if you've ever fired a Thompson, are actually have a pretty high amount of recoil despite the weight. And these weigh in at about 10 or 11 pounds. So uh, that cuts compensator did a very good job of keeping that muzzle rise down, uh, which actually for its time is a lot of sort of modern muzzle brake technology borrows a lot from this design. So very, very cool. Of course, like I said, semi-automatic only. If you are looking to get sort of a iconic Tommy gun type deal, you know, for your collection or just to, I don't know, have as a wall hanger even. I mean, these are really, really cool. Um, this is a great option. Brand new, they go for about $1,600, $1,700. We have this one in our store at $1,100, uh, and it's in light new condition. This one comes with its drum magazine and everything. Um, good alternative over getting a transferable original, which the 1927A1 variants, original ones, I see up in the $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 mark. And of course, the World War II configuration, the uh, M1 and the M1A1. Uh, typically you see transferables of those at around the $20,000 to $25,000 price mark. So 
definitely a much cheaper alternative. All right, so yeah, I didn't really have a whole lot going on to catch up with you guys on. So let's go ahead and jump into the question of the week. Why are so many people working at gun stores? Why do they seem to be lacking so heavily in customer service? Or why do you seem to get, you know, really rude individuals that, you know, oftentimes, like I said, we see people on our, our channel and even customers who come in here complain uh, about just poor customer service that they see when they go to different gun stores. I kind of come up with several theories on this sort of basis. And, uh, you know, of course, I can't speak for myself as a gun store owner, as somebody who works in a gun store, but I try absolutely and incredibly hard to maintain a really high level of professionalism with my customers, to be as friendly as possible. Now, I, I do know I am human sometimes, you know, to my detriment, I might slip, I might be rude when I don't intend to, but if you go look at our feedback, customer feedback on Facebook and Google, and Yelp, I mean, by and far, our feedback is overwhelmingly positive. It's because I try really hard to be sort of that outlier and to sort of put any type of frustration that I might be feeling aside. And I think you, you tend to find, and I think this is something I see mainly in like an older demographic, guys that may have been running gun stores for the past 20, 30, 40 years, that sort of the irritations, the daily day-to-day -day irritations of running a gun store might sort of overwhelm them to the point where it's just, they get so frustrated and they just kind of let it blurt out any time they're even the slightest bit annoyed about anything. And I don't think that that's a really good way to run things. And again, I'm just trying to give my perspective and sort of behind the scenes, I know what the irritations are and I know what sort of the uh, the day-to-day -day grind is alike. So I can, I guess I can sort of interpret that as, or at least see how over time that can really make somebody sort of jaded and sort of make them a little bit irritable uh, when you go into their store. Now that doesn't mean there is absolutely, in my opinion, absolutely no circumstance. As a genuine you know, customer, as somebody who is following gun laws, following gun safety tips, uh, there is no reason you should not be treated with respect and dignity when you're entering any business establishment, whether it's a car dealership, a gun store, a grocery store. I believe all consumers uh, have it is sort of the responsibility and the duty of the owner of that establishment to take care of their customers because their customers are the ones keeping the lights on. Um, so let's just kind of go through this point by point, some things that might be uh, sort of the culmination of events that lead to sort of irritable gun store attendants or gun store owners. So first of all is legalities. So we are in probably one of the, maybe if not the most regulated consumer-based retail market that exists. Uh, what I mean by that is of course there's regulations in construction or there's regulations in food production and things like that, but I'm talking about retail. I'm talking about point of sale with the customer. We are incredibly incredibly regulated in what we do. We constantly have to worry about the ATF breathing down our necks. We have to co constantly worry about what are, what are you gonna do with the firearm? Are you uh, attempting to straw purchase? Are you maybe suicidal? Are you homicidal? We are constantly sort of on edge is about sort of trying to read the minds of customers. What are they doing? And this is of course, in my opinion, the responsibility of owning a, a gun store. We're responsible for putting firearms out into the public and we need to do our due diligence both legally and ethically on making sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen uh, where we're, we're potentially letting a firearm go into the wrong hands. It could come out back to get us in trouble legally or end up with our license being revoked and also we're constantly having to be worried about innocent people getting hurt. So there's that sort of huge level of skepticism that has to be sort of aligned with what we do. And a lot of times I think that that can come across as being rude or arrogant or anything like that because whether you like it or not, the minute you enter a gun store, the employees there are starting to judge you. You're being scanned, you're being examined, you're being, um, you're, they are looking for red flags with you and the way you talk, the way you act, the way you behave. They might be trying to, if they're a little bit unsure, they might be trying to ask you questions which to you might be rude or prying sort of into your like, well, you know, your background or your life or anything like that, just to try and get a little bit of information out of you and see what's going on. Um, again, that is the responsibility of a, of a, in my opinion, a, a good ethical gun store, is if they're not doing that, then they're not being careful enough and it can get them in trouble and it can get you in trouble and it can get innocent people in trouble. So, you know, you just, you gotta keep that part in mind, so that's there. Now, that doesn't mean, with that being said, that does not give, you know, license 
to for anybody behind the counter other than just be totally rude to you and malign you about anything and assume the worst of you, um, you know, and, and to, to treat you, and uh, see this is such a, a fine line, to treat you in any sort of negative way without having reasonable suspicion or without having suspicion or reason to do so. Uh, with that comes into honest people who really have good intentions, but who constantly push the gun store and the gun store attendants to break the law. We are bound by a series of very uh, stringent laws. There are very uh, literal, you know, and very specific things that we have to do in conducting ourselves on paperwork and in sales and record keeping and all that sort of thing. And a lot of customers not, might not understand sort of the extent of what, of what that all entails. And the most common way that that happens is if somebody drives you know to pick up a firearm and they leave their ID at home on accident and then they want their girlfriend or their wife or their sibling who's there with them to do the background check on their behalf and of course we say no because that's a straw purchase and they say well can't they buy it for me as a gift and you say well no because this isn't really a gift this is you forgetting your ID at home and wanting somebody else to, to, to you know pick it up on your behalf and then sort of you know the irritation that the customer feels when you know it's like why you know nobody's looking sort of thing or it's just it's just a technicality on paperwork which we cannot be caught on technicalities on paperwork we have to follow that cross the t's and dot the i's where it can mean loss of our entire livelihood so the constant pushing from the customer base to get us to break the law and potentially risk our livelihood is something that happens all the time and i don't fault necessarily the customers for that all the time because i think a lot of that comes from just not knowing or not being familiar with all the laws that we have to follow. And I think there's even a lot of gun store owners that aren't too familiar. I probably don't know every single, uh, you know, uh, detail about every single law that I'm supposed to be following, although I try very, very hard to keep up with all of that. And I know most gun store owners do. Okay, so now kind of the, the other facet of this is, I've talked about this in another vlog before, and that's kind of the conversation coming into gun coming into gun stores and kind of just like, you know, wasting time. And I hear that a lot from people. Hey, man, don't get up. I'm just in here wasting time or I'm in, in here kicking tires or totally, totally, totally fine. There is nothing wrong with that. And in fact, if you tell me that right away, I might just pull out some paperwork and get that done while you're looking and you can, you know, yell at me and tell me you want to look at something if you want to look at something. But that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In this industry, this industry is, is rampant with customers who do just that. It's a very heavily tire kicking type of thing or wasting time type of thing. Or it's just firearms are one of those things that are just interesting. They're like cars. You want to come and you want to look at them. There are two ways that gun stores handle this. Okay. And this is, and I think that this is where a lot of people run into rudeness. Gun stores are used to, myself included, we are used to probably for every one person that is actually going to purchase something, we will get 10 other people who won't. So we are used to spending a lot of time with people and then not selling anything, okay? That's just what we're used to. Now, again, that is not at all a reason to be rude or irritated with you, but just think about that, especially if you have a gun store attendant who might be working on commission or commission is a big part of their thing and they spend hours a day talking with people, showing people guns and might get one person for all their work to buy something or two people or three people. Um, Again, that is part of the job and there is no reason, that is not an excuse to ever be rude to a customer. But you can, you can kind of get the idea of year in and year out and day in and day out of dealing with that. It can get irritating. Again, you need to be able to control that frustration and understand that that's part of the job. Um, the other thing about that is I personally don't look at tire kicking or just in looking and browsing, I don't look at that as a waste of time or a waste of customer. I don't need to get the sale on that to feel like it was a successful exchange. I can't tell you how many people have come in here, have looked at products, have handled things, and they don't buy something, but their next door, na their next door neighbor did because they spent, you know, I went into that gun store for 45 minutes and this person was super cool. They answered all my questions. I wasn't ready to buy, but my neighbor's ready to buy. And I told him, hey man, go down to that gun store. They are super cool. They'll get you set up. And you know, then that person comes in and you sell a gun to them. Now, if, if that one person comes in and they're kicking tires and you're just totally rude to them and they leave, it's not, they're not just not going to come back. 
they're not gonna they're not only gonna tell all their friends they're not gonna sing your high praises but they might actively tell their friends not to go to you because you're a jerk and and that's the thing that's why so every single customer interaction if it ends in a sale or it doesn't end in a sale I think most customer interactions end in a sale somewhere some customers come in and the sale is with them some customers come in and they tell a friend who comes in and tire kicks and then they tell a friend who comes in and asks you a bunch of questions then they tell a friend who then comes in and buys a gun and then the following year they buy a gun and then lo and behold that customer turns into a customer who buys five guns a year or ten guns a month you know so never ever ever waste an opportunity and i'm kind of speaking now directly to other gun store owners or attendants never waste an opportunity now that can kind of fall short on people who are just working in a gun store not necessarily the owner and they don't really let's be honest most of the case employees don't necessarily care hugely about the success of the business they work for uh they just want to make their paycheck and go home I and mean, that's just kind of the reality in most cases i'm not going to pin that on everyone sorry i had someone come in and when I was in the middle of making a point, but kind of the point is that I'm trying to make there is uh, if you want to go into a gun store just to look or to get a feel for that store, never take being, uh, you know, uh, it's never okay for anybody to be rude, uh, to be rude with you or anything like that. And I think that those gun stores are looking at you the wrong way. Um, you're not somebody in there wasting time. You're, you are a potential spokesperson for that store. So it is always important in all cases to treat everybody like they're gonna be your, your next big customer because that's, that's very likely could happen. So that's where that is. But again, I'm trying to kind of hone in on maybe some of the reasons that some people look at it a different way or they've been so used to people coming in and just kicking tires for so long for you know, every day for 20 or 30 years they've been in business. Um, that they're just tired of it and they can't help themselves but be rude when they think you're just kicking tires. So again, never an excuse, but I'm, uh, the whole point of this question is to try and get in the head or, or sort of explain from my perspective why there might be such this rampant lack of customer service in the, uh, in the gun industry, or at least in retail. And kind of the other thing is, is uh, pricing. So uh, it's very widely known that in kind of the firearm industry, wheeling and dealing is just a thing that people do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it used to be more so with us, but gun stores are very much used to, especially with the advent of sort of the, uh, the gun marketplace and the internet in the, the past five to 10 years or so. Gun stores are used to being nickel and dimed relentlessly. Um, uh, just people trying to take even five bucks off every single time they buy a gun or anything like that. There's no problem with that, but it becomes very, 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 very repetitive. And I liken it to saying, like, imagine working and every single, I mean, every 20 minutes, your boss or your boss's boss comes in the door and tries to get you to work late for free or come in on a Sunday for free or knock 20 bucks off your pay for that paycheck for no reason or things like that or try and negotiate, you know, with you or, or bring in another uh, a potential employee every single day and say, hey, they're, they're willing to work cheaper than you are. Will you work for less and start negotiating you on your pay? Because this is how you know this is how gun store owners like me make money is the product we sell and the margins are already very tight and that kind of constant constant over and over and over and over and over again can can get I can see irritating and to the point where people just get frustrated by being asked constantly. Now we took that as sort of the approach to say okay for if where is this opportunity to lower our prices or be more competitive in different areas because people are asking how can we refute that how can we be cheaper and we've created new pricing strategies around that. So actually, we've taken that in as sort of uh, criticism or constructive criticism and developed better uh, pricing strategies around different product offerings and different pricing that we're gonna offer at different points of the year, uh, what's popular, what's not popular, and run sales and promotions. So we've devised ways around that. So we've actually seen that to be very constructive. And people come in and try and nickel and dime us less and less, and we get fewer and fewer gun transfers now too. So that actually has worked to our advantage. But again, I'm not saying that it's okay for people to be irritated with you for asking for a better deal. Again, and I've said this in another vlog, it's totally fine to ask for a better deal but I'm just trying to put you in the mindset of the person behind the counter, the type of thing we see every day, and maybe why that's why the irritation is coming from that place. Lastly, you might be saying to yourself, okay, I don't go in and I don't nickel and dime. I don't go in and I don't kick tires. I don't go in and I don't act rude or like, you know, shady, and I don't like have a hood on and glasses and, you know, like 
kind of like look kind of like a, I don't know, what's, what's the word? You're saying, you're basically saying to yourself, nothing that I've outlined applies to you. And I agree, there are some cases where you just go into a gun store and you just like immediately, the very first exchange is negative. There are, in my opinion, a lot of people, and I actually come from a business background. There are a lot of people who open and operate gun stores because they are gun people and they don't have a lot of business sense. They've never been exposed to that. And customer service is not an innate thing. It is not something you are born with. Actually, what our normal human responses are is to project, in my opinion, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I have a kid, for example, I have a, a two, almost three-year-old, and the normal reaction for human beings is to project our emotions, project how we're feeling. If we're annoyed, we project that. And customer service is the learned skill to no matter how frustrating you are or frustrated you are or no matter how difficult a customer could be and no matter how complicated a scenario is or a situation is, it is the learned ability to be able to fight your urge to project how you're feeling about it and stay positive, stay constructive and stay in a good level-headed disposition with your customer at all times. That is customer service. And I, my, I mean, my, my background has been in kind of corporate, where I don't look like it, but it's been kind of in the corporate scene. That is, you know, my internships through college and I have a business degree through college. And then the jobs I had after college were sort of in that setting. So professionalism was something that is, was just sort of ingrained in you or at least ingrained in me in that setting. I cannot, you cannot afford in the business world to not be professional. Uh, you know, you won't get hired anywhere, you'll get fired at every office setting you go to. Within the gun store, it's the same. You cannot go anywhere without remaining professional, without remaining consistently good and on your best behavior with all your customers and everyone you deal with. Uh, not only that, but your customers deserve it. I mean, you guys, the guys that are, you know, people who are watching, you are the ones keeping the gun store open. Without you, they can't exist. So it's okay to demand a level of good customer service and spend your money with the gun stores that treat you well and treat you ethically. Now, there is one circumstance where rudeness sort of uh, where I think I will go ahead and say it's okay for a gun store to be rude. And that is in certain circumstances where a customer consistently impedes on your business. What I mean by that is they come in and try and butt in on deals that you're trying to make on used inventory. You know, I've had to ask people to leave for doing that, you know, and I, again, I, I try and just be firm and say, you know, please don't do that. I don't yell or call names. Um, or somebody who's being incredibly unsafe, somebody who's coming in and waving guns at people or being rude or being rude to other customers or being rude to the staff unnecessarily. You know, again, those are opportunities in which people would be asked to leave or at least warned to say, please stop that or you will be asked to leave, you know, that sort of thing. Um, people that are attempting to violate the law, you know, people who are coming in and they're obviously committing straw purchases and they're getting uh, irate and getting even more and more pushy with you to go ahead and break the law with them. Those people, again, people I have no patience for. Uh, I, I don't want to do business with them because I don't want to break the law. And other gun stores, you know, uh, I know would feel the same way. And, and oftentimes they might conflate you with a person like that, even though you're not. So guys, that was a really long winded uh, question of the week, but there is really a lot of thought that goes into that. And you know, it's something that I notice, and a ton of people have noticed. And I just think it, it just exists so heavily in the gun a retail marketplace is just this really bad, sour attitude and horrible customer service. Um, and those are just some of my thoughts as to why that might be happening. So I would like to know some of your stories, you know, leave those down in the comment section. If you agree with me or disagree, let me know that. Again, I'm going to reiterate, I don't think that there's any reason at all, except for the last ones I mentioned, uh, where you should be treated poorly or where you should not be receiving uh, customer service from the gun store that you deal with or in any other industry for that matter. Um, but, you know, I, again, this is just a trying to put my, with my experience is trying to maybe explain. These people aren't bad people. People who are being rude to you, they are not bad people. They've become rude and irritable for a reason. I'm trying to just come up with, because my, 
working environment is the same as theirs and to say, well, these are the reasons for why maybe that's happening. So just some food for thought. That's all these question of the weeks are, just me kind of giving some insight where I might be able to offer insight. But anyway, without dragging this on any longer than I already have, I'm gonna sign off, you guys. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you all next time.